My name is Melanie Zeppel and I've been researching the impacts of climate change, uh, in particular drought, heat waves, elevated CO2 and fires on forest and forest mortality and more recently on human health. What I hope is that the research will be taken by policymakers and stakeholder groups and used to advocate for more resources. So for example, we're working on one project uh, with New South Wales carers looking at, uh, we've modeled the economic impacts on vulnerable populations. Or what they actually have done is taken the research and the data that we've analyzed and they've used that to um, advocate and argue that carers need more resources. So the aspirations that I have for my research are that when we quantify the costs of climate change to human health, that state and local governments and individuals and businesses will take on board this advice and act on climate change and um, have some direct action that uh, not only reduces emissions in Australia, like that's quite a big goal, but it would be great if this advice is also used to work with stakeholder groups and uh, work with perhaps indigenous populations or the elderly or aged care facilities and say, okay, under these conditions, we know particular groups are at risk of heat wave. And if we just invest this small amount of money in preparing for heat waves, that this will have these massive savings in future. And by acting now, we're gonna um, help people, improve people's health and also save money. The Scopus Researcher Awards are a great uh, opportunity and a great blessing to help with uh, future applications for fellowships and also for future grants. A lot of people apply for fellowships to get their um, own salary to support their own projects and prizes like this are an excellent foundation for applications for fellowships so I'm really stoked to have won one. So Australia is uniquely placed to have uh, amazing light and solar radiation and also vast areas of land. So Australia could be placed to be a global leader in renewable energy engineering and education and we could train up PhDs and postdocs and be a global leader in renewable energy and battery storage and we could be exporting these to the world so it would be great if that could continue. The advice that I would have for young people considering careers in science and research are always be aware of your transferable skills so skills that you can take across disciplines because so many people for various reasons uh, will have a non-linear career so having knowing the skills that you can take across disciplines or even from academia to industry uh, that would be one major piece of advice. Another piece of advice would be get really strong at coding skills. People who can run models really well, they get really wonderful jobs and so bone up on your maths and coding skills. But I think more important than what were the obstacles I faced uh, is what are the solutions and what can we do to help other girls and women in STEM. And I would suggest for these girls, if you find mentors and a support team around you, that would be crucial. And also uh, for people in leadership and executive positions at universities, transforming the culture, transforming the institutional culture at universities is a key crucial step for attracting and retaining and maintaining women in leadership roles, which is perhaps more powerful than arguing that girls need to change. But I think it's incredibly important to have women and girls in STEM because, well, for multiple reasons, but one, if women are 51% of the population, then we need to be attracting this talent and this knowledge and these brains to answer our questions. And there are other reasons as well. For example, uh, the recent spacewalk. So uh, the spacesuits were designed too big for the women. So if there had been 50% of NASA's staff were women, probably somebody would have said, uh, do you think maybe the spacesuits should be like women shaped? And for things like 
uh, crash test dummies, whether seat belts, if they're all designed for a male body, then the airbags are exploding at the wrong position for women. So if we have women in roles, they can um, help address the creativity. And also there's evidence to suggest when there's women on boards, the, um, there's financial benefits and there's recovery from um, issues, recovery from um, like global financial crisis was faster in businesses that had more women on the board. So there's three reasons. <laughs>